query fractured femur, which has had the hair traction splint applied. The other limb here with the back splint on is query tib and fib. So what I'll do is I'll just show you the application of the small eastern bandage, which gets rid of that uh, problem we have of trying to put a figure of eight on the end of a fractured limb. And this is the easy way, without any problems. That's it, figure of eight on. I now lift up and my offsider applies the other triangular bandages. Now if you note the difference here, we've got an even pressure across the skin, but with these, when you tie a knot, you've got a pressure point. Okay, once we've splinted, we'll now package the patient. That means we're going to immobilise the limb so that when we lift them, there'll be no unnecessary movement and no risk of one limb uh, going out of the way. So for that we need one pillow and the large eastern bandage. Once again, always remember the smooth tape. Make sure that's down and that's the leading edge. So the rough surface is up. I'll just lift that up, slide through. And in this case, you put it about midway between the legs. Nice thick pillow in between. I come over this side and what we do is we get this one into position against the pillow and pull over as tight as you can, nice and firmly. Right, and just lower this down. Right, we're now the patient packaged to lift on. Okay, now we have our patient packaged in situ. We're now going to shift the patient from the ground onto the Ferno Washington stretcher. And one of the big traps we've all learned over the years is we've gone to put them on and found out that the hair traction splint is overhanging the end of the stretcher and it's quite embarrassing. Now the way we do this is remember, before you lift, extend the handles on the head end. The medium eastern bandage, drape it over, join up underneath, we make a cradle, make up the shortfall of the mattress with a pillow and the important thing is make sure we bring the canvas then back over under the head so that we're supporting the head when we lift and we're now ready for the patient to be put onto the stretcher. Back down one notch and whilst we're doing this manoeuvre ensure that the patient's head is always higher than the feet because we now have extended the length over the end of the head end of the stretcher, the weight is unevenly distributed and if you lift the foot end too high, it could overbalance down to the head end. So ensure when we go back to the foot end, we lift up and we watch the level. But one should keep in mind that with the fractured neck of femur, that we have a major bone involved. So we should be realising the importance and serious, seriousness of the fracture and we should also realise that a lot of pain is involved. Now if we look at the fact that we've fractured the neck of femur here and the normal anatomical position of the person is to be in this profile, we have both legs down straight. Now if we then move the injured leg over to tie it together, we'll create crepitus and pain by putting stress on the fracture site. We look at our patient here simulating a fractured neck of femur on the right hand side, classic foot falling over with a slight bend and shortening. So what we do, we first of all get the leading edge down so we don't catch the clothing or thing. We can lift a good leg up, pull the leading edge through equally on either side and bring it back to the buttocks, that's about right there. Then the small narrow one back under, we bring that down back under the ankles. About there, that's right. Now, pillow, the fatter the pillow, the better. So we lift the good leg out, put the pillow in. Now because the leg is fallen over and is bent, we'll then bring this leg into the same profile. Now this way we now maintain equal anatomical alignment between the two and there's no twisting and we maintain the indirect traffic. The first one we'll do is the bottom one, leading edge over, nice and firm. And of course we let the patient dictate 
that painful stimuli if they're not too happy with the way we're doing it, we'll just try another position. Now your offside always holds the leading edge and over. It doesn't matter if you crinkle a bit and then the patient's packaged. And you'll find what we're looking at here is large skin trauma, burns, lacerations, etc. Now the best way to achieve this and quickly and efficiently with the Eastern Bandage is that your offsider gets the universal dressing that's most suitable for the area. So we'll say for the benefit of the exercise, this patient has skin trauma from about here to here. So your offsider applies the dressing, sterile. And once again, I'll take the leading edge, which is smooth, to the outside. Pass that around under the armpit and keep it fairly high so that we get good coverage. Right, now I'll take over the pressure there on the dressing. I'll bring the tail end through, my offsider takes that. And while I'm holding that position here, we'll now apply a bit of tension and keep the pressure on the pad and that's it. Now keep in mind that this technique is okay for the back, exactly the same procedure. And always remember, you must always mesh the uh, Velcro in the front of the patient because when you lay them down, you won't be able to undo it. The other point to remember is that when you present your patient to hospital and you feel it's probably not wiser in the patient's interest to have it taken off immediately for the purpose of x-ray, etc., you can discreetly advise the hospital staff that this material can be x-rayed through and it will not in any way inhibit any x-rays, so it can be left on. And that the patient in this instance has the flail segment on the right side of the chest and obviously the patient would be supporting him as he is here. So what we do is we reassure the patient, ask him to gently remove his hand, apply the large universal dressing pad, my offsider now drops down the bandage and I've got the leading edge, bring it across and make sure the leading edge goes over the pad because you can still maintain the pressure on it and if you take that edge there Hank and pull it tight. Now it doesn't matter if it crinkles because you've got four lots of Velcro there. So we now have a nice secure pad securing the flail chest. Now it's also important to note that we always marry the Velcro in front of the patient. Here's the long and narrow triangular. The first one, if you could run that up the back, thanks Hank, over to the shoulder. It's as simple as that. Just run it under the arm back. So you could have a splinted arm and that's a very quick application. Next one, similar to the collar and cuff. Just bring the arm out a bit. You just do one loop over the wrist and up. And that way it locks onto the arm and once again it could be splinted. And the third one is in this aspect there and hanging down. So we still have...